This here on the left is my 40 inch, well, technically 39.7 inch, ultra wide 4K monitor from Lenovo. This one here is the P40W-20. Very large ultra wide, 40 inches, so you get a lot more height than a lot of these other ultra wides. And this one here, it's not really focused on gaming, it's only a 75 hertz refresh rate. But that 75 hertz does come in quite handy when you're doing desktop tasks, when you're doing things like scrolling through documents, scrolling through spreadsheets. In my opinion, a 75 hertz is a pretty big improvement over 60. I actually noticed that first 15 hertz refresh rate jump more than anything. You can see here that I have some other stuff on top. This is a light bar. Don't worry, I don't use it as a light bar. I use it as actually a little light when I'm doing filming down here. I do have a face light there, which I do use. So a lot of ultra wides are gonna come in uh, you know, with less height, technically, you know, when they're like 34 inches or whatever, uh, you lose a little bit of width, but I actually find you also lose a lot of height, which I don't like. This one here, this height here, the height of this here is basically exactly the same as a 32 inch screen that's 16 by nine. I had a 32 inch 4K before, and uh, you know, I didn't want to lose any vertical height. So these huge 40 inch models are really nice because yeah, they're very wide. Uh, they're not as like super ultra wide. Some of those ones that are like 50 and they come way over here massive 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 screens but they're still pretty low uh, you know this one here it focuses on still maintaining a respectable amount of height to width ratio it does have a little bit of a curve i don't normally like curved monitors but that was typically when i was when i've tried them on you know just like a 32 inch 16 by 9. right off there you can see that curve there you know it's not too aggressive just a mild little bit of a curve and because the screen is so big there's so much width to it uh, it doesn't end up causing any form of, you know, like warping. This screen here is not really a gaming monitor. Uh, it doesn't have FreeSync. It does run at 75 hertz. I do use it for gaming, however, because, you know, you can just use VSync. That is possible to do that. Uh, it doesn't produce a little bit of you know, latency in that, but the game that I play, it doesn't matter. Still works great at 75 hertz. You get a little bit more. I mean, a lot of the games that I push at such a gigantic resolution, 4K ultra wide, not just ultra wide, not just 4K, 4K ultra wide. A lot of these games these days, I mean, you're gonna be really struggling to push above 75 frames anyways. It doesn't have, you know, absolute blacks, but it does have good contrast ratio. This monitor here does also have very good colors. It's meant more as a crater monitor. And you can see here that it does cater towards craters because it is also somewhat of a USB-C hub. You can see here that it has really good connectivity, HDMI 2.0, that's okay. I wish it was 2.1, but whatever. DisplayPoint 1.4, that's what I normally use for video out. It has an Ethernet port, it has three USB-A on the bottom here, it has USB-B you can hook that up to, and then you can see here that it has a Thunderbolt 4 connector as well. And that allows us to actually work as a USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 dock. You can hook this up to your USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 capable device and it basically will work for, as a dock which is really really useful pe for people who are using this with a laptop or even you know a mini PC or something like that who don't have all the connectivity of a big monster gaming desktop but need to then you know have access to all these for their professional workflow or even you know gaming that kind of stuff as well. And then we do have this kind of tiny little dongle down here. You can see that there. You get access to a headphone jack there, a USB-A, and then the USB-C over there. It's awesome that you can do that. You know, you can plug in speakers into this little guy here. I mean, this does just pop up if you don't want to use it. And then you just basically come home, sit down, plug in your Thunderbolt over here, and then you get access to obviously the screen itself. And then you can also do things like plug in directly in here because this is the Thunderbolt port, right? So it has a ton of bandwidth. So, you know, maybe I just want to have some data on here that I was working with for the day. You know, I want to get some data moved over. This has a legacy USB-A port. If you have a MacBook, you don't even have one of those, mm -hmm. right? Plug that in, boom. Now I have my, this is a gaming drive technically, but now I have my drive over here. So this is my video editing drive here, right? So I have all my video editing files on here. This is a USB-A. It'll run about 500 megabytes a second. So if you have a high speed, just USB key or, you know, whatever, NVMe, SATA drive, plug it in there, you'll get great speeds. Or, you know, you can, I'm just gonna kill this, probably shouldn't eject it unsafely, but go like that, get myself a USB-C instead. Plug this in here. Dun, 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 dun. And now we have that. And this is gonna be USB-C, so it's gonna be faster here. Very, very convenient for Ultrabook users because this is not just something you're going to use with a desktop computer. I am primarily going to be using it with a desktop computer, but it's kind of an ultimate device for people who have um, like a laptop or a MacBook as their kind of primary PC. Take that to work with them, do their work, to take it to school with them, do their work on their MacBook, come home, sit down. All you got to do is plug in this single Thunderbolt port here, 
it's already plugged in. You get access to the ports here. There's a lot more USBs on the back I've shown. So you can have all those hooked up to other stuff and just tuck them behind the monitor, get them out of the way, right? And then you can just use this right here. And when you're done with it, you just, just go like that and it's gone, right? <laughs> so there we go, Thunderbolt 4, look at that. This is a Thunderbolt 4 enclosure. Uh, it's an Acasis Thunderbolt 4 enclosure. You can find this uh, on Amazon. Actually, it's on my Amazon store. If you look in the description below, you can grab it from there. This is a really nice way of kind of getting a compromise between the two because I don't have to have all this stuff stored on my actual handheld here, right? So, you know, I don't need to have a bazillion four terabytes of games stored on my actual handheld. I do have a pretty big amount of storage, but you know, if I come in here, I have a two, I have a four terabyte. I have a four terabyte for my operating system. Yes, I did install a four terabyte NVMe. I'm kind of crazy like that. Uh, inside the Lenovo Legion Go, but I don't want to necessarily fill it up with like video files, right? Like if you go into my videos here, there's nothing in here, right? It's my handheld, it's my handheld computer. So then I can come in here, you know, I have an SD card. You're not gonna to want to do video editing on that, but you know, I have here that has my games, right? I have, he I have here my uh, game drive, which is uh, this one over here. This is also a Thunderbolt 4 device. I can have four terabytes worth of games on here, which I do have pretty close to that. And rather than having them all on my Lenovo Legion Go, especially if you have a stock system with five, 12 gigabytes or you know, one terabyte or whatever, just with a monitor like this, you can hook up something like that there. Uh, the other option here, you know, for video editing, I can turn my handheld here into a straight up video editing PC. And here's another awesome benefit you can see here. Charging, we're actually charging the handheld. Yeah, so here's Fancy Zones. This is part of Power Tool, Power Toys that you can get from Microsoft. And you can set up all different, you know, kind of layouts here. It's gonna pick my screen. I have a second screen over there. That's that there, I could do that. So there's lots of different options here. You know, normally you're gonna get just kind of this type snapping here. I kind of like this, but you could set it up different. I mean, you can go, go like this and go a grid or something like that. And then you can, right? So I can say, you know, I want this one to be a little bit bigger. So maybe the way that I do stuff, you know, I want a big Word document in the middle and then I want like an Excel spreadsheet over here so I can have my Excel spreadsheet over there. That'll be nice. Uh, you split it into two, for example, maybe, you know, I want multiple, multiple. I can just keep splitting it up uh, into different amounts of screen. So this is kind of excessive here, but you know, probably for a lot of people, you're going to come in here and you're going to do something like maybe this here. You know, go like that and I'd have like a Word document in here, my primary screen. Over here I might have, you know, an Excel spreadsheet. Over here maybe I have something else so I'm going to come in here. Maybe I have like YouTube up there, right? And then down here I just have like a like Discord or something like that maybe open if I'm chatting with people. And you know, this is where things start to get serious for me. For video editing, this is going to be such a great screen. Normally I'm always hurting for space. You know, I always have just not enough here. The preview is always, you know, a tiny little thing here. Here I have this gigantic timeline, obviously, because it's an ultra wide, so I can put a huge timeline there. But again, because the screen height is good, it's not like those 34 inch ones where it was like sitting around here or so, right? I actually have good vertical height. So I actually have one, two, three tracks right now. I typically work with three, sometimes even more, four, five, six even. So here, you know, I can have several tracks here, no problem whatsoever all my files, my media files over here, you know, if I'm working on things. And then, you know, I have my actual video editing portion over here. So let's just grab something, bring this over here like this here. You can have all your files over here, drag them in if need be. And I'm still getting, you know, the standard 4K 16 by nine that I had before, that Dell. This is basically this screen right here. But then I also have this over here for my media, media files. All right, and here's another software that I use regularly. This is ArcGIS, ArcMap. I do mapping and cartography, and you can see here just how useful for this is for me. Let's just say this is a 16 by nine screen. You know, this is not a lot of space for me to do my work here. I normally have my table of contents over here with the data I'm working on. Over here, I have my data on my computer, basically. And then I often have a tool up in here because I'm doing analysis, basically. So you really, your map becomes tiny, unfortunately. And then if I'm also working on like maps, not just doing analysis, you get a really, really small work area. And then now with the ultra wide, it's so key for me. Same idea, pain over there, pain over there, pain over there. Technically I could probably add in another one with no problems. And I have a really, really large map space here, which typically is more close to an actual like page width. I could probably bring this a little bigger here. And if I were doing a, uh, you know, landscape style page, I would actually have a lot of room there. Here's another big one for me. I do coding. I don't do it for fun by any means. This is for my work and education. I use RStudio. I can have my code block over here, which is perfect. Often people will use a vertical monitor 
And then typically I have the data that I'm working with on the left here. And then this is just a thing here, but normally, you know, sometimes I'll have a document, if, especially if I'm reading my own paper that I'm working on. I'll have a paper here on the right, and then I'll have my data over here on the left, and then I have my actual code block here. In the yeah, and here's an example of a slower pace game. You can see here this is Resident Evil 4, obviously. Very immersive having that extra width over here, and it does natively support this resolution here. So, yeah, it's quite immersive to have that over here. You know, some people like this, like super mega ultra wides over here for gaming. Uh, this is more than enough for me, to be honest. And, uh, you know, again, it has that height up here, so I don't feel like I'm missing out on any screen or anything. And uh, you, you can see there's no tearing. I just turned on V-Sync, right? V-Sync on, and it's good. Uh, Mid-range kind of thing, 75 hertz refresh rate at this extremely high resolution is gonna be awesome. Again, not for competitive shooters necessarily, because some of those people like higher resolutions. Some of those people like higher FPS, and, you know, they, they'd actually happily sacrifice visual quality for more FPS, basically. Uh, for me, though, you know, these are the type of games that I play that are more visually appealing. Um, so the 75 FPS is fine. 75 hertz refresh rate, 75 FPS is fine. That's pr probably where I target. 60 FPS is great. And if I can get 75, all the more better. And you can see here there's no tearing. This might make you motion sick, so be careful. But yeah, no tearing whatsoever, right, on a game like this. So what are my conclusions on this monitor? First, we'll go over the negatives. First negative, I would say, uh, is that it has this large base. You can see here, I actually set my keyboard on there so it works perfectly. So if you're just, you know, like using this as a professional monitor, the office monitor, you're not going to care because it does have this large base and, uh, you know, it's going to take up a lot of desk room. For me, it sucks because, you know, I do filming here. So I lose a little bit of my depth. Unfortunately, when I'm filming, I do need to film a lot of stuff at my desk. You know, I don't have a huge studio. I'm not a professional YouTuber or anything like that. You know, I don't have that kind of, uh, I guess, I don't have those resources, unfortunately, so I, I do what I do. Uh, so I do move, lose that depth, unfortunately. And you might say, well, why don't you get an arm? Well, it's very heavy. It's a very heavy monitor. Uh, I actually had an industrial arm there. It just doesn't work. Uh, you could mount it on the wall, no problem. You have zero issues with that. But if you're going to mount it on you know, an actual arm, adjustable arm, unfortunately, it's just too heavy. And then when I'm doing work, like work work, uh, I can just basically sit that right there. And it actually looks nice and clean. So that's a negative. Of course, you know, it doesn't have free sync. So for gaming purposes, unfortunately, you're not going to have free sync. Uh, I mean, you can set it at 75 hertz refresh rate. You can lock down FPS. You can use V-Sync, which, again, most people who are going to be using this type of monitor won't care. They're going to be fine with it because you're not looking for crazy high frame rates when you're on a 4K ultrawide. Right? This is not 4K. This is not an ultrawide. This is a 4K ultrawide. So now let's jump into the positives. That little curve there helps a lot, actually. Just that little gentle curve because it's such a big screen. Uh, I mean, a lot of width on it. That little bit of uh, curve does help quite a bit, I would say. Just making it a little bit more immersive when you're looking at both of the panels here. Uh, it does have really good colors as well. So if you're doing professional level work, it does have really nice colors. It doesn't match the LG over here, which is like an actual Pantone validated professional tier editing screen, but it's close enough that the fact that they can be side by side is very telling. Uh, yeah, it's been an awesome screen for me. It is pretty expensive if you bought it new, but again, it's not new anymore. Uh, you can buy these more likely refurbished or secondhand or, you know, off of third-party websites for a good price, cheaper than they were, way cheaper than they were at launch. And I think it's a fantastic monitor. It's, if you're a professional gamer, like that's all you care about, you're probably looking at like an OLED, one of the more flagship OLEDs that are coming out now anyways. So I think professionals, if you can get for a good price, I think it's definitely worth it. Real estate, it adds to my desk there, right? My desk is not a small desk by any means. And uh, without having to throw on 50 screens onto my desk, I have this very, very impressive amount of screen here.